Um, well, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier on, my name is Peter Clee and I'm VK8ZZ. I'm a director and secretary with the Wireless Institute. Um, Lee, you will probably know, Lee, Lee is VK3GK, he's a director on the Wireless Institute. So I'd like to thank uh, the Radio Amateurs Old Timers Club for uh, allowing me a few minutes to, uh, to, to speak with you and they've told me that I should answer questions. Um, what I wanted to talk about, or what we want to talk about today is uh, class licence, the assessment and uh, assessor system, uh, a little bit on WRC23 and uh, the NZART. So <clears throat> last night we had a, uh, a webinar with uh, some 50 um, affiliated club presidents uh, present. Uh, we talked about the submission that the, the um, WIA had uh, had given or had submitted to the what to the ACMA. Uh, it's now available on the website. Uh, it was a, it's a ten-page document. It's been produced by the uh, Wireless Institute of Australia's Education Committee and our Spectrum Strategy Committee. So that's freely available. There'll be a, a, an item on the national news this this coming uh, weekend. So you'll hear all about it. Uh, also available on there is. Uh, a copy of the response to submissions uh, on uh, on high power uh, that that came out. It didn't make very much news, but it's it's available on our website if you uh, if you want to have a read about high power. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I think why should we limit it to one kilowatt? <laughs> All right, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll mostly be answering questions if you've got any questions, but. The assessment and assessor system that was discussed uh, in the uh, ACMA proposal, the consultation, uh, was very similar to when the WIA uh, did the assessment and assessor, were assessors before um, a AMC took it over. Uh, AMC um, didn't get out of it what they thought they might, uh, so it's, uh, it's now going to go back to the ACMA. Uh, we're, we're encouraging all of the um, WIA assessors to, to re-register. Um, our assessors, if you're coming through the WIA, will be covered by our volunteer insurance. Um, and uh, But there's a requirement for insurance uh, to be an ACMA assessor. Um, similar to uh, a few things that, that were raised in the, uh, in, that we raised with the ACMA is uh, there's a, a 50 kilometre limit if, uh, if you want to do uh, online uh, assessment. Uh, we've, we've, we wonder about the, the, uh, the need for a 50 kilometre. Uh, also, um, uh, one assessor per five candidates. Um, the other thing uh, was that um, uh, they, um, they're not looking really at remote, in remote assessments at this stage, but it's hope hopefully something that will come in the near future. Um, did you want to add anything to that, Lee? Uh, yeah, well, uh, with, with the, regarding to the remote um, assessments, there'll be either the, the general assessor or the special assessor, like the WI had nominated and, and normal assessors, uh, will be able to actually do remotes. But as, as Peter um, highlighted the 50k limit, we need to uh, make campaign to ACMA to remove that. Um, it's, it's just too, too difficult on um, people with disabilities, uh, people who may not be able to travel, etc. So, so basically, a ACMA's um, plan is really it, it's, it's planting sand. Does that make sense? And uh, they've got uh, goalposts going to be moved as we um, campaign. And the WA has an extremely good relationship with the ACMA. So I, I attend uh, meetings every couple of months with the ACMA guys who are involved with um, all this sort of thing. Um, one of the, I'll, I'll just back there, one of the, the bonuses about the ACMA taking back the assessment program is that the fees for exams now are free. So because the assessors do it as a volunteer um, assessment and, and their, it's their time and it's, it's actually done free, then the ACMA are not charging candidates for any assessment fees. So whether it's uh, if you sit it once or twice or three times, with its regulations or in any of the class level exams, free. The only cost will be, um, in that case, will be the application for licence and that call sign recommendation and getting it issued. And moving forward with the class licence, our, uh, our licence fees will be zero. 
So that, that's really um, a, 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 the biggest thing that will come off of most people here will be that the fact that we're ongoing. There'll be a, basically a five or ten year, um, basically, base you may well go, you're still there, a bit like Ofcom and the FCC do, and, and you have to just basically say, yeah, we're still here, and then your license will be reissued effectively. So that, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It, on interference, uh, yeah, nothing will really change. It'll be the same deal if we're a, um, a uh, secondary service. We, we may have to accept the interference from commercial users. But if we're a primary, then we'll have the same uh, rights as we do now, and ACMA will need to act on those interfering with amateurs in a, a primary service. So that's good enough for anyway. Very good. Um, yeah, OK, thanks, uh, Lee. Um, <clears throat> the um, uh, WRC 23, uh, the, the Wireless Institute has two delegates to go to the World Radio Conference 23. WRC 23, if you're not uh, aware of it, is the, is the only place that radio regulations for the world can change. Uh, WRC 23 is sponsored by the International Telecommunications Union, which is an arm of uh, the United Nations. So if a country wants to change a rule, uh, every other country has to agree to it, and and those WRC the World Radio Conferences only every happen every four to five years. In 2019, or going back a bit further, I think it was WRC 15 is when we got the WARC bans. That's where that came from. That took about five years of, of pre-planning to to do. WRC uh, 19, there was a, a bit of a uh, uh, controversy about uh, France that wanted to get rid of uh, a two metre allocation, uh, but we were lucky in that uh, the, uh, the, the, the WRC didn't agree to remove two metre allocation for, for amateurs. Uh, this year uh, it's 23 centimetres that's, that's under threat, and uh, we've had um, our, um, our uh, uh, delegate. Uh, he's uh, currently on a, on a plane back from, on his way back from Geneva. He attended one of, or he attended all six of the WRC preparatory meetings. Uh, one, one was held here in August in Brisbane, but uh, Dale Hughes, VK1DSH, is our delegate to WRC, along with Peter Pocorny, VK2EMR. Uh, they're going to WRC 23, which will be held in Dubai. And it goes for one month. So, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and and they work every day. Um, the the it, w, uh, WIA um, pays for all of that. All right. Um, NZART. Uh, we have a very close working relationship with the New Zealand uh, group. They're our sister organisation. Um, the president of uh, NZART is coming to our uh, conference in Bundaberg, and there's a plug. By the way, did you know we have a conference and expo in Bundaberg on the long weekend of May? So it's the very first weekend of May. Um, it'll go over two days, two and a half days, so it'll be Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, there'll be an early bird rate if you want to register early, uh, but uh, that's looking, looking like it will be a great event. We've got a lot of... Um, Commercial operators coming in, ICOM, Yaesu, um, Strictly Ham have said no, no unfortunately, until Lee takes it over. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, and then in uh, 2025, uh, our uh, President Scott is going to go to the NZART conference in, in New Zealand. Uh, right, ooh. Is that, oh, never mind. Um, maybe it's been voting with the screen. Yeah, it's getting wider. <laughs> okay, class license. Um, uh, it, it's going to happen. Uh, a, a few people have hesitations about it, um, but it, the, 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 the dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's needs to be finalised. We are in communications very, very closely with the ACMA. Um, the, the highlights of it are. Uh, that there will be a nil license fee. Uh, <clears throat> some of the issues that have arisen are uh, licenses can only be issued to real people, to a, a, to a person. So the question has come up as what happens with club call signs? Um, ACMA don't know really what to do with that yet. 
but uh, that, that is going to be an issue that, uh, that needs to be addressed before the introduction of pipe licences legal. But one of the other things regarding uh, the fee structure is we're at the moment um, non-assigned, so it means we can operate within a band of frequencies, not specific frequencies, and repeaters. So and, and so when we go to class licences, we we'll have a class licence, and it'll be free, as I said before. But if you're a beacon, if you've got a beacon or a repeater, they're actually assigned, and so the licence fee structure will still apply. And um, the, the ACMA are looking at their uh, fee restructuring at the moment, but it, I don't think it's much unlike what we currently have at the moment. Yeah, um, there is a, if, if your club uh, has um, any, uh, or gets, a, gets a, a bill from the ACMA, the ACMA system seems to want to go and charge per frequency per site. Um, if, if you happen to get an invoice from the ACMA that, that charges you for multiple frequencies on a site, return it and argue it, uh, because they will, they will reverse that. Uh, where else? Um, so I've been through a few of those things. Uh, the 50 kilometre condition. Uh, I, ACMA have forbade private houses, but we're we're disputing that. We think you know that private houses should be uh, should be available for exams, but they're looking more so at uh, club venues, uh, community halls. Uh, but we've asked them who pays for the cost of hiring the community halls. Um, uh, and the online assessment system, yeah, so we've been through those. All right, I uh, mentioned too about the uh, preparatory conference, um, WP5A, which is where Dale is at the moment. We only sent one delegate to that. Interestingly enough, um, the Australian Communications and Media Authority appointed Dale to be their representative at WPA. Five. Uh, so we were actually working, he was wearing two hats, I asked him if he was Tasmanian and he said no. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, there's, there's issues with the Galileo and the, uh, the, Russian, the Russian GPS system. Um, yeah, as I said, we're sending two delegates to represent Australia and overall the Wireless Institute have budgeted $60,000 for the three years leading, working up to um, uh, the WRC. So it's, it's certainly not cheap, but that's where a lot of uh, membership funds go to. Oh. All right, that's it. Um, time, for, uh, time for port. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. If our licences are going to be free, is the ACMA going to acknowledge they are so, still supplying uh, <coughs> interference in the inspections by their qualified, if they have any, yeah. staff? Yeah, great, great question. Paid, great question. Um, and as Lee mentioned earlier on, if the interference is on a band that we are primary and, and the interference is coming from a, another user or, or commercial, yes, they will. If we are operating in a, on a secondary basis, and the interference comes from our primary. Sorry, too much. Don't come Monday. The uh, the other thing is though, if 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 it, we are on a secondary service, and the interference is coming from, you know, P, PIR solar panels, uh, and you can prove it and you can document it, uh, then they possibly might do something about it. Oh. <laughs> yes. We had a very positive experience with ACMA last year, an interference on our repeater down in Rasbo, and they were fantastic. Yes. Uh, we documented it very well, we like video and audio evidence and, and triangulation from, from our sources, and they were right on it and they fixed it very feasible. Yeah. So yeah, they were um, very, very good. That, that, that experience is not uncommon around the country. They, they do do it. And indeed, uh, because uh, repeaters will be licensed, 
and you, we pay for those licences, we, we still get coverage uh, of uh, inference if there's, a, if there's such an issue to, to us. Luckily, you know, we're all very technically skilled and all of our repeaters are, uh, work, work on significant uh, filtering, cavity filtering, uh, so the, 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 the interference is minimised, but there are occasions when it, when right, it does Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. The uh, licence, is this actually a hard copy licence, uh, or is it a uh, bit of documentation type of way that you use such? Well, you can watch it. Um, at the current moment, we've all got a certificate of proficiency, and with the new class licence, ACMA will issue everybody with a certificate or an ACMA recognition certificate. It's the same beast, different name, because of the, the structure's changed. So that will be useful for operating overseas if we for reciprocal uh, permits and things if we travel uh, in that respect. So yeah, so that will, does that, does that answer the question? No, but what's the note? Will you have a piece of paper in the Hard screen? copy. Yeah, yeah, well, you get a, 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 a recognition certificate, which can be downloaded. That's what, that's what they're telling us. So we haven't got there yet. Um, and that's what we hope to have, otherwise, we struggle when we go overseas. Yeah. And probably uh, something that you really need to know is that we're insisting that it's HUREC and CEPT compliant. So we, it, and the document needs to say that so that it is uh, recognised by overseas fraternities. If I may. So, um, the changes to the class class, if you want to call it that, I must have the information that's been out there has been fairly ambiguous to say the least. Um, I've trolled the ACT aside a few times and I found out about the name changes, so you've really answered that question before I asked it. Is there any documentation on the ACT aside regarding the cost of a licence and you said that'll be free? Will we find that on the ACT aside? Because I've looked and looked and looked and I'm shagged if I can find it. Uh, not currently. It's not there at the minute because uh, they're waiting to uh, for the review of the consultation that has just it finished on yeah. when, on yeah, Tuesday. Sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, when they've uh, um, when they've done that consultation and they've uh, amalgamated and, and got their thoughts together, mm -hmm. then they will publish those details. Um, if if you if you've got some really um, uh, times when you can't get to sleep. There's about six documents that we've just uploaded to our uh, website this morning right. um, that, that has a whole heap of information and, and thoughts from the ACMA about what they want to do, uh, replies from us on what we think they should do, and also um, you know, a, a lot of individuals have also um, written in and made, um, made suggestions for this consultation. So. It'll be a bit of a process, as as I pointed out earlier on. The uh, the the, oops, the, um, the consultation on higher power that, that has only just come out as well in the last month. So uh, that that provides interesting reading. I think it's about a 40-page document. I presume that the vigilators have only just found out about the changes to the training program. I'll, I'll let you do that. Link. I do ask because I'm involved yeah. in the training process with Spark. Uh, yeah, just take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Mm. Uh, so and, and our vigilators a week ago were unaware of any of this. Okay, so are you an assessor as well? No, not not for love nor money, but I okay. do. I help with training. That's right, because um, all the AC, uh, all the AMC assessors that were registered for having their details publicly on the on the ACMA website uh, were given. To, that information was given to ACMA, and they've forwarded. All the uh, there's been two assessor um, enlightenments, I guess is probably the best <laughs> way to put it. Of what, what's going to happen? Yeah, the, the decisions. But, but yeah. it's all it's all flexible. So they're, they're coming out with their uh, proposals, and then we go back and say, yeah, I like that, don't like that. Can we adjust this, whatever? So it's still the, the goalposts are still being moved around. Um, so that that's where we're at. So you, your assessors, <coughs> if you you're involved in that, Just, no, okay. So, so the assessors that you guys are involved with, the training, you should yeah. be able, they should have been on those calls. Oh, well, that, 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, they're outstanding assessors and we've used them. They're members of the club. Yeah. And they do an outstanding job. Um, 
but as of a week ago, uh, they weren't forthcoming about what they knew, or they knew it, or they didn't know it, or... We, so we so they've attended those Zoom meetings, and not all assessors did attend, but they, they yeah, should have got right. in with invitations. Um, they should be able to let you know, and we can chat after if you've got any specific questions. I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's fascinating information. It's probably good information, but up until five minutes ago, uh, I hadn't heard it. No Alright, I think can I, can a, a lot of us are in the dark, of course, so yes, it's, yeah, absolutely, it's, yeah, I think we're mushrooms. Um, yes. The document about the high power, but that's on the WA website. It is, it? yes. Yeah. There, there's a copy for you. Oh, bless your heart. No worries. Hey, now, I've got a question. I'm in a, uh, in a room of experts. Now, I, I'm... Nick's being in the unknown factor yeah. of a spurt. So, I, I'm looking at the, the MH370 issue. Oh, yes. And the, the aircraft that went down. Um, now, I know that there was the ping from the Rolls-Royce engine which created a satellite map. Now, uh, I, I was interested to know that the pilot didn't even know about this, so this is, this is quite, he didn't, was able, able not to turn that off. But there's been another issue about Whisper. The, the crisscrossing of Whisper records a maybe doing some sort of tracking and this is where I want the information from these experts in this room and whether that is a valid way of tracking that aircraft and also I looked at the ARRL handbook from 2018 and there's a paragraph from Whisper about that big and it just it said go and find the software and that was it so I was just interesting in the comments from the room on this. Thanks Sarah, Thank I you. think that's, that's very interesting and I think it's the subject for a whole new Discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think a yeah, whole new presentation, and and I would encourage Sarah to research it and, and make that presentation. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, all right. I think uh, we might close that now. Now, I was told that if I if I put that over the edge, that everyone would like me. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and. Uh, Lee and I will be both around for a little while uh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you very much.